Hey guys, it's Nathaniel again, and today we're going to take a look at a 1982 Yorktown 41 center cockpit sloop. Uh, this is a, a well-built, heavily built uh, cruising yacht. It's located down in, uh, in well, the Coronado Cays, um, south of San Diego, and uh, this boat could take you all over the world. And she's one of very few Yorktowns that was finished out uh, by the factory. Uh, most were uh, like a complete it yourself, finish out the interior yourself kind of deal, and this one uh, was not. So um, they did a really good job on the uh, on the inside, and she's been pretty well taken care of. And let's go take a look. All right, let's check out the interior of this Yorktown 41 from 1982. All right, here's the salon. All right, we're gonna go down four steps with this companion way. And I'll pan back, nice, comfy galley, All right? Look at the shine on here. Uh, you know, the, uh, I think it was, had a fresh coat of varnish not too long ago. Um, some nice classic touches. Wooden sole, propane range, oven, um, apartment size fridge with freezer compartment, uh, very useful toaster oven, especially if you're at dock. Um, here is your control panel. A microwave coffee stuff and plenty of storage right we got up here we got more storage there behind the range and plenty of more throughout like I probably have my pantry over here yeah. a lot of storage on this boat well there's a little newer stereo there's VHF um, a lot of the lights have been replaced with LEDs on this Check out the cushions. These aren't from 1982. They're in really nice shape. Um, also, this table does drop down, um, so you can make this into a large berth. Um, that's very nice. Uh, so you could probably sleep easily six on this vessel. And then check out all the storage. Like, because of the way the hull is shaped, you they've been able to put in these sort of negative angle cabinetry, right, which adds a ton of volume for storage. And same thing over here. Check that out. Let's see. Um, all right, got some speakers for the stereo. This was really nice. I like this boat. Let's check out the guest stateroom up front. So a large V-berth uh, with tons of storage around. Uh, in the center there, that's your, your chain locker. Uh, but there's your filler cushion that would go right here. And then guess what? You don't have to have a little stool. You just take those two steps to port. Boom, boom, and you are up in bed. Snug as a bug. I like it. And tons of storage. Like in all this cabinetry, there's, it's very deep. Plenty of room for all your clothes and supplies, uh, whether you're living aboard or um, heading out cruising, living aboard at sea. And then huge amount of space over here. So uh, huge locker here, and then a ton of cabinetry behind this door. Uh, just a huge amount of volume, like I keep saying. And here is your head. Uh, check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six cabinets in here. So plenty of storage. Plus, you've got a separate shower stall. All right? This is not a wet head. You've got a curtain in there. And uh, this is a newer Jabsco electric flush toilet with a really cool toilet seat. 
really nice forward head. I'm digging it. And some new LED lighting. Let's head back. Um, so under behind this, you do have access to the uh, forward side of the engine room. Got to get in there, uh, but let's go. We'll check it out from the uh, aft cabin. All right. So in this little tunnel, um, you've got a ton more, ton more storage. So another place to have a, a pantry, but you've got two large um, drawers. On the inside, and and two enormous cabinet doors on uh, on the outside of the hole there. Um, some shelving, and here is your aft berth. Uh, it's nice and big, uh, plenty wide, probably about as wide as a queen, and um, yeah, you just sort of crawl in there. All right, this thing isn't as beamy as your new Hunter. Uh, 49, you don't know, it's not a center line walk around queen, uh, but it's plenty big. And then you've got plenty of storage as well underneath to the side. There's lights back there, so plenty of reading opportunities. And then you got one, two, three, four port lights in here, so plenty of light. Um, built in lighting, little fan there. Uh, this is this is great. And then back here is this aft head. This head is not connected to a, um, um, sorry, to a blackwater tank. Um, so it flushes directly overboard. So you can't use that in the slip. Uh, but if you're out to sea, you can. Yeah, feed the fish. And this is, there's no shower back here, right? Uh, just a standard faucet, no RV shower attached. Let's take a look at the engine room real quick. Um, you can move this Hemingway stairs if you want. Uh, but check it out. Nice clean engine. A little four-cylinder diesel. And actually, not really little, little. I mean, this is a decent size uh, four-cylinder diesel. I don't know the output. Um, that might be in the, in the link that I attached to the video. Um, this boat is in the Coronado case and, oh, and then there is some newer wiring there. You can see an ACR up there in the corner. Um, uh, so it's not a charging relay, so you can, uh, charge all your batteries, um, uh, when there's charge current coming in, but then it isolates the, uh, the house bank from the starting bank when you don't have charging currents coming in. All right, let's go back to the salon the tunnel all right very nice I like this boat all right, here she is from the side I don't know if we should take yeah let's start at the front here at the front now we have a 30 kilogram claw anchor attached to a, an electric windlass uh, electric windlass has an up foot control up here on the foredeck. Um, also, a um, roller furling for that jib. Um, all chain road on this boat. We've got some new jib sheets. Um, note the uh, teak hull to deck joints. So this boat, if you look at it, sort of looks, well, fairly similar, um, but with even a larger fiberglass upper side, the deck side, uh, like like an Out Island 41. Um, so pretty cool boat, pretty cool design. Uh, sort of, well, I guess, I don't know if you'd call that tumble home. I guess you could. The boat also includes a high fill dinghy uh, with a six horsepower motor on it. Now this is one of those newer aluminum ones. Yeah, it looks to be in great shape, pretty new. And, um, and so that's included. Also, uh, there's a, a cheaper um, inflatable there that could also take that six horsepower on the foredeck. And now you'll notice that this foredeck is big and flat. Uh, great place, you can put some chocks up there for this high filled dinghy and, and cruise around the world. Or of course, you might mount some davits on the aft. 
on this turn. All right, so double spreader rig. Uh, you got some spreader lights on the first one. Uh, note your steaming light three quarter, two thirds of the way up there. And uh, Windex, um, I guess that's not hooked up right now, but I'm gonna take care of that when you buy it. Um, and also note your spinnaker pole that you could use to uh, use as a hoisting point for this high field dinghy. Um, the hull itself looks really nice. I mean, I like this tan color. Um, that'll stay looking clean even when it's not. And yeah, note here, we do have, this was an upgrade at the time. A, uh, we have brass or bronze um, uh, port lights. And then I believe these are aluminum hatches up top. There's that windlass. And a couple of uh, paddle board holders. Actually, I think two sets of those, one on each side. So that's really nice. Let's walk around as far as we can to the aft. Take a look at the stern. A little Danforth anchor on a holder uh, for a stern anchor. Um, that system back there could be used for a, a wind generator. Most likely it was. Um, but you could also throw a radar up on there if you didn't want to mount it on the mast. Uh, the barbecue on the rail. Um, there's a dinghy motor mount. Let's hop aboard and start here in the back. We got some nice uh, newer pads, uh, one for this cooler and one for lounging about on, uh, I don't know, this trunk cabin. Now, a rod holder, nice easy mount for the uh, boat hook. Got some drain holes back here. Uh, some snatch blocks. What else? Here's your VHF antenna. And um, so check this out. No traveler on this boat, right? Um, but you do have new lines uh, running to the boom control. And um, there is a full enclosure um, along with this boat. So there is a a green matching zip-in full enclosure that goes over this hoop in the back um, so you can be secure in any weather on this boat. Here's your shore power inlet and what's this one? Another shore power inlet. I guess that's the new one. A couple more pads up here. Uh, nice green sail cover. Uh, according to the seller, the, uh, the sails are tired uh, but functional. There's that. A little view of the mast again. And um, you just have two lines coming down. Uh, this is your main sheet and your jib sheet. And then, I'm sorry, halyard. Jib halyard, main halyard. And let's go up front. Take a look at this. This is a supernatural manufactured by Pacific Marine rope. Interesting. I haven't seen that particular uh, roller throwing set up before. Uh, nice big claw anchor. Oop, I just stepped on the uh, switch. All right, so there's the mast again. And um, this dinghy. Here's a bird's eye view of that high field dinghy, um, which is honestly a, a, a huge plus. Um, with this purchase. Um, you do have an out of date, but quite possibly recertifiable um, life vest or life raft as well here. And, all right. Um, canvas is uh, actually, it's older, but it looks as though it's been restitched. So you see the new stitching on there? So the new stitching looks good. Um, you know. Uh, the Dodger itself is faded, but uh, the Isinglass seems all right. Is that rigid polycarbonate in the front? All right, there's a Lumar 42 speed, another one over on the uh, port side. And now, here's a bird's eye view of the center cockpit. Check it out. So the boat does have autopilot. Um, it's an auto helm, I think it's an ST40. SD4000, 
So there's that control. Um, and up front, you've got plenty of lines let aft with clutches. Um, it does have these wind instruments. However, um, I guess they're not hooked up to the gear on the, uh, on the top of the mast, or it may need new gear on the top of the mast. So those are available, hopefully be able to be used in the future, but um, not currently installed. And then here, look at this. Look at these controls. So this is, you know, some of the most complete instrumentation I've ever seen on a sailboat. Uh, number one, you've got amps, volts, water temp, RPMs, hour meter, um, in the digital form, and then uh, oil pressure, a clock, and um, a fuel gauge. Now that is pretty cool. Well, you don't normally get nearly that much information off of a uh, off of a sailboat. Um, here we have this. You have a little table. Enjoy your snacks on in the cockpit. But look at this center cockpit. Plenty of room. Super secure, They're out of the weather. This is a really nice space. Um, and I believe this bench long enough to sleep on. That other one, no. Um, and they have plenty of room up here. You just shove all your crap that you end up throwing on deck when you're sailing long distances. I really like this layout. This is a, and here's your view looking forward. Uh, from the helm, right through this eyes and glass, it's looking good. And above the helm, stick your head up, that's great. Uh, but otherwise, back here, I mean, you've got great visibility, you know, great. Your sails are right here, um, but just above your head, so you're not going to get slammed. And you can see your sail easily and make your adjustments from right here in the cockpit. I like it. And this nice rack here, you can hang your lines on, keep things organized, and um, and there's your main winch. Go. All right, starts right up. Water well. Nice. Can I give her a little gas? But yeah, volts at 14. Six is pulling like 15 amps right now. 42 hours since this, uh, or 43 hours since this gauge cluster was put in. 60 psi. Cool. Yeah, she sounds good. Thanks for taking a look with me at this 1982 Yorktown 41. Uh, it is for sale. This was just a boat tour, though, for me. It's not one of my listings, um, but there's a link in the um, description of the video um, to the Craigslist ad. I have some information there, um, more information about the boat, and you can contact the seller there. Um, but it's cool up. Located okay, down in the Coronado Cays, I do believe it will need a new slip when it does sell. Um, yeah. But might be a great candidate to cruise in Mexico. It's a cool boat, and I think the price is right. So check it out.